Okay, now coming to the last part and uh, this is all about your configuration tools, right? Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, uh, Puppet and Kef has created a big, big storm uh, on uh, this uh, particular stuff called uh, configuration management. And much before uh, Puppet and um, Chef came into the market, uh, Yahoo and Google were already in this business uh, with their own set of custom tools. Okay, even before this, there was another tool which uh, today nobody talks about. Uh, I, I, I do not know whether you've, uh, you've ever come across this tool. So CF Engine was probably the first attempt uh, to create this configuration and, and unfortunately nobody talks about it. And you know why this was not a successful product? A very, very strange reason this was actually built on uh, using C and C++ code. Okay, so which was not possible. See, that's where, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of people were put off. Once you write code in those kind of languages, it is never it is never easy for normal people to make changes. But how uh, what made uh, you know uh, Puppet and Chef so successful is the use of the language to develop this tool. It was uh, it was built on Ruby, and everything was on Ruby. So anybody could uh, who understood uh, uh, who comes from a background of either Python or Perl were able to quickly get on to uh, the, the, dev the development stuff on Ruby and they could start work on it. <clears throat> okay, so beat Puppet, uh, beat, uh, uh, sorry, uh, beat uh, Chef, right? Chef is the other tool huh? uh, uh, for uh, configuration management. Both were built up Ruby. Now, the one tool which appeals to me basically, uh, though not mentioned in this, is called SolStack. Okay, now SolStack, uh, okay, what makes SolStack so different compared to these tools is the way it can scale. See, uh, why do we use these tools? Because we have to handle hundreds of servers, right? Sorry, not even hundreds, I'm sorry, thousands of servers. When you want to handle such such kind of uh, uh, numbers, then tools, uh, then you should also have your application scaling. And salt stack was designed for uh, uh, for environments which are of uh, a public uh, public inter in internet in size, mm -hmm. and that was built of Python. And the other tool, which is again becoming popular, is Ansible. Okay, uh, Puppet, Chef, and Salt Stack are uh, designed of uh, is is of the architecture. Uh, what do you call client server model, whereas Ansible has tried to push an architecture which of uh, which is more of server model. That means I'm not trying to install an agent to do my work. Okay, it's a non-agentless base of model, so it appeals to some some organizations that way. So uh, various uh, various technologies, various architectures uh, to go about doing. Okay, so uh, so. At this moment, these are the four tools which are kind of getting popular. Um, uh, Ansible seems to be appealing to a lot of enterprises, but uh, uh, no way to match Puppet in any way. Puppet is the standard, uh, the most popular, most popular among all these. Uh, and SolStack is kind of taking the role more towards internet companies because it can scale in a big way compared to any other tool. So if you have a if you, if you have organizations, like as an example, uh, uh, either your Flipkart and Snapdeals and various others, they tend to prefer to use SolStack compared to use, uh, uh, com uh, compared to a Puppet or a Check. And Puppet seems to be the standard for uh, enterprises uh, today and, uh, uh, and, and uh, most popular, okay, most popular among uh, these things. <coughs> okay, so, um, I think by now you understand what uh, what uh, uh, Puppet is. It's a configuration management tool. Now the word confuses, hmm? word confuses because when I say it's a configuration management tool to many people, 
they think it is CMDB as in ITIL. Definitely not, right? We know that. It's not a configuration management database tool where you'll keep your IP address and host name. Yeah, uh, that is also some kind of configuration, but this is much more than that. It is not an ITIL tool. Okay. You and and by by now you even know the use cases where you will apply your uh, puppet as such, right? So let's go. <coughs> okay. So why puppet? Uh, it is tough to do this on one node. What happens when there are thousand nodes, right? It's a simple use case. If there are thousands of nodes, I, uh, today when when we talk thousands of nodes. Uh, it doesn't mean that we may have thousands of servers. Sometimes you may have maybe you know 100 or 200 servers, but you have hundreds and thousands of VMs. That's where the catch is, right? When you have VMs and there is uncontrollable sprawl of VMs, or oh, it did it, it, the configuration becomes so very complicated. Okay, so a node need not be a physical instance. It it can also be a virtual instance. Okay. So that's what we need to uh, understand as well here. Hmm? Okay, so Puppet is a configuration management tool that is used to deploy, configure, manage a server machine. Now, if you ask this question to me, can I use, uh, I, I told you I can use Puppet to deploy virtual machines okay uh, now now my next question arises can i dip, uh, can i use puppet to install bare metal uh, imaging that means just like how to use in pxc okay can we do this uh, we can't right sometimes uh, so that's where people sometimes get uh, a little confused uh, will i use will my puppet replace even the pxc environment it can't. Why it can't? For a simple reason, for Puppet to work, once I install my OS, I have to install the Puppet agent. Right? So, uh, only when the Puppet agent is installed, this tool is ready for configuration. Okay, so you install the Puppet agent and then the Puppet agent will talk to your Puppet server and pull down all the configuration uh, files. So example, now you see me that every time I want to make a change uh, uh, to my uh, uh, etzresolve.conf, I have to go to each machine, make a change, right? Now I don't have to do, <coughs> uh, do that. I can go to my Puppet server and do a push to all these servers to the, uh, to the respective file that I want to push. Or the Puppet agent itself will pull these files when it notices that a new version has arrived. Okay, so as I said, uh, uh, you remember, Puppet is a server agent based architecture. Okay, so it controls all the steps right from, uh, okay, uh, uh, bootstrapping to the end of server life. Okay, I, I just want to qualify this thing. Uh, it doesn't do OS installation, but why the statement is there is basically, it uh, it can also do the complete VM uh, install. When I say when I'm doing a VM install, basically installing the OS itself, right? Okay. Can define configuration at the node level. Can group them <coughs> according to roles like a, a web server, database server, whatever. Maintain a consistent consistency across nodes. If a change is done locally, it is rolled back to the original <coughs> configuration. So what I want to tell you here is. <coughs> And the, this line, if a change is done locally, it is rolled back. Now imagine I made a change in my uh, configuration file, uh, in you say etc configuration pointing to a different DNS. After I've made the change, uh, <laughs> you you can go back and see if, if Puppet was uh, configured, uh, if Puppet was installed, uh, it will quickly restore back to the uh, old configuration. Why? Because your server has a has a, a list of configuration for that uh, machine. If anything changes, he pushes back. That is another advantage. Okay, it is not about just pulling and pushing. It also about 
keeping a consistent configuration throughout its life cycle without your uh, uh, intervention. Okay, so uh, advantages of Puppet, um, it keep, uh, keeps verifying the configuration at specific intervals, uh, it, uh, like, you know, it defines configuration with the help of poles, large open source developer base, uh, okay, I mean uh, that is something <laughs> may or may not be an advantage, it works smoothly with even large configurations, uh, language use is very easy, um, unlike uh, Ruby or others. Uh, uh, sorry, if, if, if this line may be a mistake sometimes, it's built off Ruby, but certain portions of this lang of this tool is uh, is being used by another language called Clojure. Okay, uh, it, it's a uh, I, I don't know uh, how much of that portion has gone into the uh, uh, this en uh, environment clo uh, language called Clojure. So Clojure is a, a, a language built on top of JVM. So basically you require JVM for it to uh, work. So there is a little bit of architectural redesign which is happening within Puppet and I'm not sure basically why uh, they would uh, they would want to do. Uh, looking at uh, Spummy, I mean I said using a salt, uh, the salt stack. Salt stack is such a tool that I'm able to scale scale uh, in, in, in thousands. Okay, they are promising that this tool even go uh, a thousand, but there may be very specific require uh, use cases where uh, Puppet might have realized that they would want to go in for such a language, but Puppet is not targeted for uh, internet, uh, I am telling you no organization from the internet space for to use Puppet, but Puppet is a great uh, tool within a enterprise environment. So today Puppet as, as a tool literally does everything what uh, once a while uh, your uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft the, the system center configuration uh, manager would do, uh, which is updating your uh, OS also. See Puppet can't do that, Puppet can't do that uh, in, in, in a way what the system configuration, the uh, SCCM does, uh, but good enough to install all your applications on top of your OS and of course the configuration itself and keep it consistent, that is most important, that means any changes that happen is immediately reverted because of the architecture, there is a server, there is a client and it, it keeps in sync continuously, okay. So, okay, so this is what I was trying to tell you, so uh, Puppet works on a master server model, uh, so Puppet master this machine contains all the configuration for different hosts. So Puppet Master will run as a daemon on this master server, okay. Puppet Agent, this is a daemon which runs on each node and talks to the uh, talks to the master, okay. And uh, the connection between these two machines is made, uh, is made in a secure encrypted channel with the help of SSL. Now, one tool uh, which is in between all of this, I, uh, See that is the tool which uh, which will actually tell you how much it can scale. It's called the middleware. See there is a middleware uh, uh, which is connecting your uh, puppet master, uh, puppet master and uh, sorry for your puppet master, your puppet host. Uh, in between there is a tool called a middleware. So now this middleware is nothing but it could be anything. It could be uh, maybe uh, you, you, I, I don't know whether you are aware of these uh, tools like. Rabbit MQ, uh, MQ and you must have heard before this IBM had a, a big tool called MQ series and things like that. So it is the middleware actually which defines how much you can scale. So there is a, another tool uh, in, in between that, uh, but I think Puppet is using what they have developed on their own. Then, okay, so how Puppet works, uh, so there is a manifest there is a configuration DB, okay, uh, and um, uh, it, uh, uh, it, it, this is all the master side, there is a report processor, there is a file server and there is a certificate authority which issues your certificate. So uh, your configurator, uh, your agent, uh, your console configurator, uh, yeah, it evaluates rather than generates a report and then it's, it sends back. 
Now, um, a manifest is where all your files are stored, what, what, they, what manifest is where the configurations are. Let's take an example of that. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is how it looks like uh, uh, your uh, uh, declaration uh, of how your files are uh, and uh, uh, you use one of those languages which are there in the puppet, uh, uh, the uh, puppet, uh, I forgot the language name, so you to create this stuff and then you push it across. So, um, so the following steps uh, are the steps for puppet config. The client connects to your master server, identifies the configuration according to the client, the master builds the configuration that needs to be applied to those, compiles it and makes it ready. The client then pulls the configuration and applies them to the uh, uh, server. So this is how that whole process uh, works. Uh, but all these declarations, what you, the configurations, what you do are in normal text format. Okay. So, uh, so that way it makes your life a little uh, easy to edit and you're not making any other configuration changes. So resources, uh, the puppet code is primarily com co uh, composed of resource declarations. A resource describes uh, about the state of the system, example, a certain user or file should exist or a package should be installed. Okay, so uh, resources, anything, it could be a configuration file, it could be a package, that needs to be existing in a particular node, okay? And you need to declare this at your server side before it can be applied to your client side, okay? So this is our resources declared. Uh, this is a case of a user. So this, this, this resource declaration describes a user resource named Mitchell with the specified attributes and this resource uh, a user like this will then be applied across all your uh, uh, all your systems where it needs to be applied. Okay, and uh, to list all the reports, you can run this command. Okay, so puppet programs are called as manifests. Huh? Uh, so manifests are composed of puppet code and their file names use DPS extension. So the default uh, uh, main manifest is your uh, uh, site which contains all the configuration for all your uh, nodes as such. Uh, uh, and it is from, see this is the database which, which is always referred to by the clients to keep the consistency. Okay, and then when we do this, we would kind of get a better idea of this. Uh, uh, okay, and, and in Puppet, uh, uh, classes are uh, code blocks that can be used, uh, can be called in a code as well. Uh, using class allows you to use Puppet code and make them reading your things easier, but okay. So the class, uh, we will try to write one of these things as such. Uh, um, yeah, these, these are the little complicated parts of it. Uh, now, uh, you should need, as a puppet engineer, you should know how to write, uh, write uh, these classes, those manifest files. That means you need to understand a little bit of, a, uh, a bit of a coding, okay? And this is where your skills will come in uh, using these tools. And you need to, as I said, you need to master one of these, either a puppet or a chef or a salt stack uh, to do this entire configuration information. And, and this is sometimes some organizations have a separate team handling all these work uh, together. Okay, so a class declaration occurs when a class is called in a manifest. A class declaration tells Puppet to evaluate the code within the class. It comes in two flavors, a normal and resource-like. A normal declaration occurs uh, when included with a keyword is used in Puppet called uh, like example class. And a resource-like declaration occurs when a class is declared like a, a, a resource. Okay, so uh, yeah, so include is to pull it from another place, and here you are actually making it appear within the same uh, file as such. Okay. Okay, so module is a collection of manifests and data, and they have a specific direct uh, directory structure. So modules are useful for organizing your puppet code because they allow you to split your code into multiple manifests. 
Uh, it is considered best practice to use modules to organize almost all of your puppet manifest. Uh, to add a module to a puppet, you go into this mark. So this is where you bring in uh, what kind of uh, uh, configurations that you would need to apply to a group of uh, a system. So understand here, um, uh, we are in a uh, we are in a heterogeneous environment. Uh, 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 sorry, when I say puppet is mainly used in enterprises, and enterprises are heterogeneous environment. So you will have sometimes Windows, you will have uh, Unix, and and in and in this situation, you need to organize these templates in a way which uh, which can be utilized by various of these guys, uh, and and not to get mixed up. Okay, so sometimes you have separate teams uh, creating and using these uh, uh, building these uh, modules. Okay. Okay, installation. Okay, uh, installing is uh, pretty simple. Uh, um, you you just need to um, you can do a yum, uh, and then there is a bit of a configuration that needs to be done. Uh, on and you need to do two two sides: your puppet master um, and your puppet agent. Agent, as I said, runs on the on the serve side, and the only thing you need to do is just specify where your master is in the configuration file, and then. And then that is good to go. Actually, then the next thing is only to start configuring of what files you may want to push it into it, or what applications you may want to push it into it, and create your groups and various other things. 